Hey everybody, this is Sean Pitcher, your sports dietitian out of Atlanta, Georgia. We are going to continue on our pre-competition fueling discussion. We're going to start getting into now what food should we eat leading up to whatever the specific activity is. Again, this could be a morning activity, it could be an evening activity. There's lots of different scenarios where training activity is going to pop up. I'm just going to give you some basic recommendations that you can utilize during that specific time. Again, they're not going to be finite, they're not going to be exact but they're at least going to give you some type of guideline for you to be able to look at and refer to based on whatever time your activity is. So if we, and I'll just throw out an example, right? So we have something to think about in our minds when we're looking through this slide. So let's say we have a game at 7 PM. If I have a game at 7 PM, I want to make sure that I'm having some type of meal three to four hours before that game time. Now, even farther before that, if I have a game at seven o'clock, we're not just going to have that one meal leading up to game time. You also need to make sure for that athlete, or if you're educating that athlete, you want to have breakfast, you want to have a snack. In some cases before a game, you're having lunch and a pregame meal. So you might have three meals or two meals or two meals and a snack even before that, we get to that game, even before it starts. Again, we want to make sure that fuel tank is topped off at full when we get into that game. So we are able to, or game or competition or whatever it is. So we are able to maximize the potential on what we can do on that field or on that court during that specific time, right? So a couple of things we look at here. One thing you want to have on your plate is some type of carbohydrate. Now, since this meal is three to four hours before your game, having some type of complex carbohydrate is going to be a good idea, right? Complex carbohydrates for simple carbohydrates, complex are typically going to have a little bit more fiber, a little bit more protein, right? Are going to break down a little bit slower and give us that longer lasting energy. Now, if you have an athlete, that struggles typically eating before some type of game or activity or training, you might want to honestly just do simple carbohydrates, a white rice, a white potato, a white bread, because it's easier for them to chew, to eat, and to digest. Um, and that way you still get carbohydrates and fuel in them, and you still making sure they're, they're fueling appropriately leading up to the game time. So again, that's something where the type of carbohydrate they choose is going to depend. It's also going to depend on what's available in their environment, right? Are they at home? Are they in an apartment? Are they cooking for themselves? Are they at a school or college or pro facility where they have a chef making the food for them? Again, all these factors are going to depend on what the person sticks on their plate. But what I want you to know is you need to get some type of carbohydrate option on your plate before that activity time. Okay, so we got healthy fats, we have lean proteins, um, healthy fats, that could be what your food is cooked in. So that could be olive oil, it could be avocado, you could have a fatty fish like a salmon or a tuna. Uh, we want to make sure we're having some type of lean protein option. All right, again, when we talk, if you want to go back to the macronutrients video, it goes into a little bit more of what a lean protein is. But you can see from this example here, right, this ground beef, it's 93% lean, 7% fat. You don't typically want to go below 80, 20 if it's a ground meat or other things you can visualize in your head, a grilled chicken breast, a sirloin steak, a pork tenderloin. These are all lean cuts of meat. And again, you don't want to have something that's super heavy and fat that's fried, coated, cheesy. Something that's going to make you feel sluggish and slow and tired. You don't want to try to include something like that or too much of that too close to an activity or training because you don't want to have those negative effects GI wise, physically or mentally. And then we want to include some type of fruits or vegetables on our plate. So you can see three to four hours before, um, if you go back to one of my videos I did on how to develop a performance plate, this is what I would consider performance plate, right? We have our carbs, we have our protein, and then we have our fruit and or vegetables or both on the plate with a little bit of sprinkle of healthy fats specifically throughout that meal. Now, if I were to give you an example meal, um, let's say you're cooking for yourself, you could do white rice, you could do some lean ground beef, and then maybe you did some peppers and onions or broccoli or green beans or zucchini, and then boom, you have a performance plate right there. 
let's say you didn't want to make it for yourself. Your guy doesn't have a lot of cooking skills. If you need to learn how to cook, go to my YouTube channel with all my recipes to learn how to cook. But if you don't and you said, oh, well, I'm going to order something out or I'm going to go to fast food or I'm going to go someplace to pick up my quote unquote performance meal before I get to my activity or training. All right. Make sure you're looking at the menu ahead of time and seeing what options they have. So typically two of the, the most famous places that most athletes always go and eat at is Chick-fil-A and Chipotle. Um, so I'll give you a couple examples on what you could do there. So let's say I go to Chipotle, you could get a rice bowl. Let's say it's white rice. Maybe you get grilled chicken. You get some vegetables on there. You sprinkle a little bit of cheese and then maybe you get a, a little dab of, of um, a little dab of guacamole on there. That would be a complete uh, Chipotle bowl, for example. And you could do the vice versa, same thing in a burrito. It'd just be with a tortilla or you could do taco shells. If you want to do Chick-fil-A, Right, I would try to go with a grilled nuggets or sandwich rather than a fried sandwich if possible. If you are going to go with a fried sandwich, try to match the sandwich with real high quality choices around it. Right, getting a water or 100% juice, you know, getting a fruit cup or a salad or a mac and cheese, a soup, a yogurt parfait, something that's going to be a little bit higher quality to match along with that sandwich. Preferably, if you can go with a grilled sandwich, that's going to be a leaner protein option, which would be better. And maybe you get one to two grilled sandwiches, you get a mac and cheese, and then on the side, you get a water and a fruit cup or a salad or something like that. Any of those combinations you could essentially do. But that's a basic background and idea with some scenarios on what you could eat, what you should eat, leading um, three to four hours before your activity starts. Um, again, if you want to watch more videos like this, hit up my YouTube channel. I have recipes on there. I have more sports nutrition videos. My Roots podcast is on there as well. I have my link tree below, which has all my different sites and links. If you want to hit me up on Instagram, if you guys need nutrition services, seminars, webinars, group education, um, I have the ability to do that. Y'all just have to hit me up and we can discuss that. Hope you guys enjoy and continue to listen to these segments on pre-comp fueling. <laughs>